Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at mesons, pions, kaons and we're going to finish off with a summary. So, so far we've encountered a group of particles called hadrons and we've seen that hadrons can be further divided into two other groups, one of which is the baryons which we've already looked at and the other group is the mesons which is what we're going to look at in more detail in this video. All particles can be divided into hadrons and leptons. So we've seen that the two main groups of particles are hadrons and leptons and a proton is an example of a hadron and the electron is an example of a lepton. We know that hadrons can be further divided into baryons and mesons. So hadrons, one of the main groups of particles, are actually further divided into two other groups. And these groups are called baryons, which we've already looked at in more detail, and mesons. Mesons are composed of two quarks, specifically a quark-antiquark -quark pair. So here is an example of a meson, and we've got a down quark along with an anti-down quark. So we've got the down quark here, so this is a type of quark, and then we've also got the down quark's antiquark. We can consider the antiparticle of a meson by replacing its quarks with their antiquarks. So we've just looked at a meson made up of a down quark and also the down antiquark. So for example, if we swap the down quark here for the down antiquark and the anti-down quark for the down quark, we end up with the anti-meson. We see that a meson antiparticle is a quark-antiquark pair and therefore is still a meson. So we've just worked out what the anti-meson is of our original meson and we saw that it's made up of an anti-down quark and a down quark. So therefore it's actually got the same composition as the meson we looked at. So we can see that the anti-meson is also a meson. So especially a meson is its own antiparticle. So going back to our anti-meson, we've said it's equivalent to the original meson we were looking at because it's still made up of a down antiquark and a down quark. So we can see that it's got the same composition as the original meson, so its own antiparticle. Another way to define a meson is as a particle which will never decay into a proton or into any particles that could subsequently decay to a proton. So what we're saying here is that our meson cannot decay into a proton. So it therefore can't be a baryon because we've said all baryons are either protons or particles that can decay to become a proton. And our meson also can't decay into a particle that could subsequently decay into a proton. So for example, it can't decay into a neutron and then the neutron decay into a proton via beta decay. So this is also not possible. So again, this confirms that mesons aren't baryons, they're their own group of particles. So if mesons can't decay into protons, this means that mesons always have less mass than a proton. So if we look at the mass of a meson and compare it to the mass of a proton, we can see that the mass of the meson is always less than the mass of a proton. Because if it was greater than the mass of the proton, then it would be able to decay to become the more stable particle that is a proton. In fact, mesons are intermediate in mass between an electron and a proton. So if we compare the mass of an electron with the mass of a meson, and the mass of a proton, we find that the proton has the greatest mass and the electron has the smallest mass. So the mass of a meson comes somewhere in between the two. There are two types of mesons which are common in interactions, the pion and the kaon. So here we have our pion and this here is the kaon. So these are the two most common mesons that we're going to look at. And both of these mesons can be either positively charged, negatively charged, or neutral, so they have no charge. 
So now that we understand what mesons are, and we've seen that there are two specific types of mesons, the pions and the kaons, we're going to look at pions in a bit more detail. One class of mesons are called pions. So what we can see here is our image for a pion, and this pion is just a type of meson. We can represent the pion with a symbol. So the symbol we use for a pion is the Greek letter pi. There are three types of pion. So we've got the positively charged pion, and this has symbol pi plus. So the plus here represents that it's positively charged. We have the negatively charged pion. So this has symbol pi minus to show its negative charge. And finally, we have a neutral pion, and this has symbol pi naught, and this represents that it's got zero charge, so it's a neutral particle. All pions, or pi mesons, have a mass greater than a muon, but smaller than a proton. So if we compare the masses of a muon, a pion, and a proton, we find that the proton has the greatest mass, then the pion has the next greatest mass, and the muon has the smallest mass out of these three particles. We can work out what kind of pion a given particle is from its quark composition. So for example, here we have a down and an anti-down quark composition for this meson, and using this quark composition, we can work out what type of pion this is. So what we mean by type of pion is whether it's a positively charged one, a negatively charged one, or a neutral pion. So we're going to use the quark composition to work out the charge. So let's try this out in an example. What kind of pion is a meson consisting of a down quark and a down antiquark? So the composition of this pion here is a down quark and a down antiquark. And we know that a down quark has a charge of minus a third. And a down antiquark has a charge of plus a third. And that's because they have charges of the same magnitude but opposite sign. So our first step is to write the equation for the total charge of the pion in terms of its individual quarks. So the total charge of the pion is going to be given by the charge of the down quark plus the charge of the down antiquark. Our second step is to substitute values into the equation to solve for the total charge of the pion. So the total charge of the pion is going to be given by the sum of the charges of the quarks it's composed of. So we said the charge of a down quark is minus a third, and then we're going to add to it the charge of the down antiquark which is plus a third. So what we've got here is the total charge is given by plus a third minus a third, which gives us a total charge of zero. So we can see that it's got no charge. And now our third and final step is to identify the type of pion using its total charge. So we can see that its total charge is zero, which tells us that this is a neutral pion because it has no charge. And using our symbols for pions, we can write down that this pion is the neutral pion with symbol pi naught. We actually have three different quark compositions for neutral pions. So we've just seen the composition where we have a down quark and a down antiquark, and we saw that this has zero charge, which is why it's the neutral pion. And we actually have two other compositions as well. A composition where we have the up quark with the up antiquark, and also the strange quark with the strange antiquark. So we can work out the charges for these two compositions as well. So the charge for the up quark up antiquark composition is given by plus two thirds, which is the charge of an up quark, added to minus two thirds, which is the charge of an anti up quark. So this gives us an overall charge of zero. So we can see that this is also a neutral pion. So it's going to have a symbol pi naught. And we're also going to do the same for strange anti-strange composition. So we have a charge of minus a third added to a charge of plus a third. So we've said that a strange quark has a charge of minus a third 
and then its antiquark is going to have a charge of the same magnitude but opposite sign, which is why we get the plus a third. And this therefore gives us an overall charge of zero again. So we can again see that we've got a neutral pi on, and this is going to have symbol pi naught. We can also show the quark composition for a negative pi on and positive pi on. So here we have a pi on with a down quark and also an anti up quark. So we can work out the charge of this pi on and see if it's negative or positive. So the charge of a down quark is minus a third, and then we're going to add to it the charge of an anti-up quark. And this is going to have opposite sign to the charge of an up quark, so it's going to have a charge minus two thirds. So minus a third minus two thirds gives us an overall charge of minus one. So we can therefore see this is our negatively charged pi on, so it's our pi minus. And now we're going to look at a different quark composition for a pi on, which is an up quark and an anti-down quark. So the charge of this pi on is going to be given by the charge of our up quark, which has charge plus two thirds, added to the charge of our anti-down quark. So the anti-down quark is going to have a charge opposite to its quark pair, which is the down quark. So it's going to have a charge of plus a third. So this therefore gives us an overall charge of plus one. So we can see that this quark composition is the composition of our positive pi on. So we've got a pi plus. And what's important to see here is this isn't a meson anti meson pair, even though they're both still mesons, but we've actually got our particle and our corresponding antiparticle. And let's see why this is. So we can see here that in our original meson, we've got our down quark, and we then swap this for an anti down quark in this other meson. And then again, we've originally got our anti up quark, which we swap for our up quark. So we can see that we have exchanged each quark for its antiquark pair, or the antiquark for its quark pair. So therefore, a positively charged meson, pi plus, is the antiparticle, or particle, depending on which way you see it, to the pi minus meson. So they're each other's particle-antiparticle pair. And finally, we're going to look at the other type of meson, which is the kaon. One class of mesons are called kaons. So this here is the symbol we're going to use for our kaon. And again, this is just a type of meson. And as we've represented all the other particles we've come across so far, we can represent the kaon with a symbol. So the symbol we use for the kaon is just a k. And there are three types of kaon. So we've got a positively charged kaon, and represent this using the symbol K plus, the plus representing its positive charge. We have a negatively charged K on, and this is represented with the symbol K minus. And finally, we also have the neutral K on, and this is represented with symbol K naught to show the zero charge. The K on, or the K meson, has a mass greater than a pi on, but smaller than a proton. So we're going to compare the masses of a pi on, a k on, and a proton. So here we have a pi on, and here we have a k on. So out of these three particles, the proton has the greatest mass, and the pi on has the smallest mass, so we can see that the k on's mass comes somewhere in between the two. As with pi ons, we can consider the quark composition of the k on to determine its type. So, for example, here we've got a down quark and an anti strange quark, and that makes up our quark composition for this k on. And using this quark composition, we can find out the charge of this k on and therefore determine its type. So, to determine whether it's positive, negative, or neutral. So, let's try this out in an example. What kind of k on is a meson consisting of a down quark? And a strange antiquark. So our quark composition here is a down quark and a strange antiquark. So we know our down quark is going to have a charge of minus a third, and we know that our strange antiquark is going to have a charge of plus a third. 
Our first step is to write the equation for the total charge of the kaon in terms of its individual quarks. So the total charge of the kaon is going to be equal to the sum of the charges of the individual quarks. So the charge of the down quark plus the charge of the strange antiquark. So we're going to add these two charges together to get the total charge. Our second step is to substitute values into the equation to solve for the total charge of the kaon. So therefore the total charge of the kaon is going to be equal to so we said the charge of the down quark, so we know that is minus a third, plus the charge of the anti-strange quark. So that has charge of plus a third. So it's got the same magnitude of charge as the strange quark, but opposite sign. So we've got minus a third plus a third, which gives us a total charge of zero. And our final step is to identify the type of kaon using its total charge. So we can see that we've got an overall charge of zero, so we therefore have a neutral k on. So we can represent it with the symbol k naught. The k on with the down antiquark and strange quark instead of the down quark and strange antiquark is also neutral and is called the neutral anti k on. So now we're going to consider anti down quark and our strange quark. So we know that the charge of the anti-down quark is going to be of same magnitude but opposite sign of the charge of the down quark, so therefore its charge is going to be equal to plus a third, and likewise the charge of the strange quark is going to be equal and opposite to the charge of the anti-strange quark, so it's going to be minus a third. So therefore our overall charge can be found by adding the two together. So we've got plus a third plus minus a third. So that gives us an overall charge of zero. So we can again see that we've actually got a neutral k on. But because now we've got the antiquarks of the previous quark composition, this is the neutral anti k on. So we use a bar on the symbol. And that's to show that this is the antiparticle of the neutral k on. We can also show the quark composition for a negative k on and a positive k on. So the first composition we're going to look at is one with a strange quark and an anti up quark. So the charge for this quark composition is going to be given by the charge of our strange quark, which is minus a third plus the charge of our anti-up quark, which is minus two-thirds. So that gives us an overall charge of minus one. So we can therefore see that this is going to be the k minus k on. So we've got our negatively charged k on. And now if we look at the other quark composition, we've now got an up quark and an anti-strange quark. So we can see that like with our positive and negative pions, we've got our quark anti quark pairs. So instead of an anti up quark, we've got an up quark, and instead of our strange quark, we've got a strange anti quark. So our charge for this particle is going to be given by the charge of an up quark, which is plus two thirds, plus the charge of an anti strange quark, and that has charge plus one third. So this gives us an overall charge of plus one. So we can therefore see that this k on has a positive charge, so it's our k plus k on. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.